Good morning. We are super excited that you chose to worship online with us today. We can't wait, though, until we are ready and uh, able to worship with you in person. But if you need prayer, help, food, or someone to just pray with and talk with, talk to you, you can feel free to reach out to any of us. You can email us at faithnewcumberland at gmail.com and we'll be happy to get back to you just as soon as we can. We'd love to help in any way that we can. God has called us to be the hands and the feet of him extended and so we do aim to do that as a church and as a leadership team here at Faith Assembly. So without further ado, let's offer up our hearts to him this morning. Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you, God, for the opportunity to worship you, to praise you, to give you glory and honor. Lord, you have been so good to us, and we are so thankful. We're so grateful today. God, would you give us your perspective? Would you give us your heart as we worship you today? Thank you, Lord.
think of any better way to thank him by just telling him how much we love and adore him. He gives us breath. He gives us life. Oh, my Jesus, I love you. Thank you, Jesus.
Jesus, I love thee. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you today. We thank you for who you are. Thank you for loving us. And, Lord, we express our love, our devotion, our praise, and our worship to you, Jesus. We say with our mouth, "How, my Jesus, we love you. My Jesus, I love you. In word, in deed, in action. Even when we're staying at home, even wherever we're at right now, Lord, we just say, Jesus, I love you. you. Jesus, thank you for loving me. So, Lord, I pray your blessing upon this time. Lord, uh, as we share your word, as we discuss your word today, as people are watching online, I just pray your blessing upon each household, each family, each person watching. Someone who's struggling today. Someone's tuning in and they're struggling today. I pray that the peace, Lord, that surpasses all understanding would guard their hearts and their minds in Christ Jesus. So today, would you reach out your hands of love and peace and your presence. Wrap your arms around someone today. Your presence. The presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Flood each room, each household, we pray. Help everyone to know how much you love them and help them to respond by saying, Jesus, I love you. We love you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Well, thanks for joining us again today online. And... uh, Man, it probably won't be two more of these and a few a few more of these and we'll be gather starting to gather in person. We are just beginning to uh, explore some plans and processes with that. I know some areas are beginning to uh, go from the red phase to yellow phase. Our regions won't do that for another uh, week and so we're we're kind of putting some plans and just praying about what that could look like here. Whatever we do, we just want to be as safe and as responsible as we can, uh, just with our congregation, with our community around us. And so we'll be getting some plans out to you as we as we get more details. And uh, just appreciate your flexibility and this, t- this unique season as we're gathering online this way. Well, today I just, uh, I'm going to invite our panel up and we do have an offering. We just appreciate your giving and uh, we've been online for, what, eight, nine weeks now? It seems like eight or nine months. And you've just been so uh, generous and so faithful in your giving. And I know all of us just want to say thank you. Thank you so much. Helps us just to continue to do what God's called us to do and continue to be uh, the hands and feet of Jesus. We were able to bless a, a local um, retirement community this last week on Mother's Day. And that's because you're giving. So thank you for giving. And we love to just uh, be a blessing to our community that way. So if you uh, want to give, if you're able to give, and uh, just to challenge you, just continue to walk in faith in giving. This isn't the time to, to walk in fear. This is the time to walk in faith and walk by faith. Your finances might look different. You might not be sure about jobs or income, but just continue to trust the Lord. Trust the Lord in every area, with your kids, with school, with your job, and with the finances that he's given to you. That biblical principle uh, wasn't cut off at quarantine, you know, just to give and it will be given to you, pressed down, shaken together, and overflowing. And so as you give, as you step out in faith, God will bless you. God will provide. Don't worry. God will provide all your needs. So there's two ways that you can give. You can give online, and the giving address will be there on your screen. You can give simply, securely online. It's an easy thing to do. If you want to set up recurring giving, uh, we'd encourage you to do that and set it up through your bank account. You can do ACH uh, giving that way, and it's just real simple. It just comes right out of your checking account. And when you do it that way, it's the least amount of percentages or uh, that are taken out as a, as a fee if you do it through your ACH through an uh, electronic bank transfer. Um, or you can give by credit card. You can do that way online as well. 
Or you can just do it the, the, the way we've been doing it for years is you can mail in your gift. And the, the address will be on your screen. You can mail in uh, whether it's a giving envelope or it's just your own envelope from home. And uh, mail in your check uh, or your cash or whatever offering you're giving. We just do appreciate your obedience uh, in giving. So let's just pray for this offering. Lord, we pray for your abundance. We thank you for your provision. Lord, that, uh, Lord, no matter where we are, what we're doing, God, you are continuing to provide. You're continuing to bless and multiply. So we pray, Lord, that you would bless, multiply this offering for your glory, for your honor. Help us to love people to life in Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, today we're going to do something very unique and special. We are starting what we're calling a panel discussion. Rot row. So I've invited these two lovely ladies to to join me up on the stage. This and, could uh, get dangerous. Folks. This could. I, I should just turn my mic off and go have a seat and just see what they have to say. So, <laughs> so we're going to take a different topic each week, and we we just thought you know this would be a great time to just change it up. I know we've been online for. I think it's, what, eight or nine weeks? I've lost track. I've lost track. And uh, for half our life, I think. But uh, we feel like, you know, just need to change it up and make it maybe a little more engaging. So feel free to use the chat, use the comments, chat in your questions and your thoughts, and we will compile a list for future ones of these. So if there's a question you're wrestling with through this time of quarantine, if there's a you know, something you're like, man, what, what, what about this or what about that? Or, you know, I've always thought about this and, you know, and we might, we might choose that topic. You never know. So uh, put it in the chat, put it in the comments. We'd love to hear your feedback. Or if you have a thought on what we're saying and just, just uh, chat there, we can chat online that way. It's a pretty cool feature. I know uh, when we're gathered here in person, you can raise your hand. Uh, well, there's no one here, so you can't raise your hand. So just in the chats, that's you raising your hand. Or give us a thumbs up to say, yeah, I agree. Or if you don't agree, say boo, you know, and, and do a, a, a tomato emoji. See if you can find a tomato emoji. I don't know if there's I don't know if they there. have those. Just don't so. bring real tomatoes back. Yeah, just oh, no. hey, real tomatoes. <laughs> Um, I won't go into that ra rabbit trail. I won't tell them about my favorite show I'm watching. So we won't go into tomatoes right now. But uh, remember my, my food documentary I've been watching? So we, we won't go there. Tomatoes, I thought. I've been uh, asleep during that yeah, one. So. So. Yeah, if you know me, I like documentaries. We found this awesome one. So it's called The Food That Built America. So if you're, if you're wondering what you should watch right now, that's a great one. The Food That Built America. So It is interesting. Just, I, I just keep falling asleep. I'm just a nerd at heart. I, just, I enjoy that. So today's topic is this. I won't, I won't, we won't waste your time anymore. Is this. Drum roll. <laughs> Fellowship <laughs> in a digital age. <laughs> Fellowship in a Digital Age. The subtitle is this. You can't quarantine God's love. Or you can't quarantine God's love. Huh? See what I did there? Uh, See that? Like contain, contain, but quarantine. Quarantine. So, yeah, cheesy dad joke. It's a good thing you're cute. Hmm. So, fellowship. And so that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to just do it in two different areas. And we'll go over that. Because um, I think... As a pastor, as, as going through this, when I've been thinking about church and what we normally do, I think, you know, content preaching has been pretty consistent. We, we're still able to get content out to you and still able to preach the word. And we have worship and we have prayer. And we have all these other. But I think when I, when I th sit down and say, you know, a unique challenge in this season I feel is fellowship. And so today we're going to ask two questions. What is fellowship? Because I think we all have our cultural ideas of what fellowship is. So we're going to say, okay, what does the Bible say? What, is, what does fellowship look like biblically? And then what does it look like during the season of quarantine? What could it look like? What are the challenges? What are the opportunities? So that's what today's discussion will be. Um, I'll do, probably be doing a little more of the talking and the be up front, and then we'll open it up throughout. But I, I told ladies they can just chime in what they want. and uh, just He doesn't psh. have to invite me. That's right. <laughs> Can someone mute this? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no one's even at the soundboard, so there we go. So there's no muting of mics today. I, I'm in trouble. Here we go. So fellowship. Fellowship is one of the five uh, biblical functions or purposes of a church, of any church. The five are, if you, you review, evangelism, discipleship, fellowship, 
okay? Ministry and worship. And when you say, okay, what does a church look like? What is a church? There's five type functions that we speak about, and fellowship is one of those core ideas of a church. And so, uh, but during this season of quarantine, during the season of staying at home, fellowship, I found, is often one of the toughest challenges for the church to adjust to. And I'll just say it that way. It, it's not necessarily the toughest thing to do. It's just it's the toughest challenge to adjust to. Why? Because we're so used to doing fellowship a different way, right? What? Think about, here's a question for you in the audience, and you can put it in your chat. When you hear the word fellowship, what do you think about? What, what, what does that bring memories to you when I say fellowship? Just in your chat, say, what is that? What, any words that come to you, ladies? Church potluck dinner. I know. That's a, <laughs> I, I think food was food. definitely good. Food. <laughs> if I haven't said it already, there's a show called The Food That Built a Man. No, we should do our own dog. The Food That Built a Church. No, I'm just kidding. So church, po- absolutely. Yeah, Fe- you think of fellowship, I think of fellowship hall. I think yeah. of fellowship meals. I think of church picnic, church potluck. You know, maybe in the chat, what has your favorite church potluck dish ever been? All Portuguese right. Portuguese brownies. Oh, yes. Oh, shout out to Jada. Jada. Come on, Portuguese, Portuguese brownies. brownies. Oh, buddy. <sighs> I could just uh, I could just talk chat. about Portuguese brownies <laughs> and We're how delicious on, they are. Jada, if you're out there, you could you could post a, the recipe for everyone to enjoy these. But uh, so <laughs> you know, in the chat, what do you think about when you hear fellowship? You think of food, all right. You think of being around people, right? Usually, fellowship is like, man, I get to hang out with people. We get to see people. You get to shake your hands. I get to hug them. You know, it's it's being a part of a maybe for you it's a small group or a life group. Our ladies used to meet at the library and have a life group discussion. So fellowship for you is just yeah, that's that's what your picture is. It's being together in a circle, in a group, talking, praying with one another. For you, that's what fellowship is and looks like. Um, activities together, maybe having people over to your house. I know for us, like walking around the neighborhood, it's just so different. Like you can't just like, hey, let's go over to so-and-so's house. Hey, let's just hang out. And it's like you're just kind of just in this awkward phase we're in right now. So fellowship, our practice of fellowship looks very different than what our season that we find ourselves in. So that, that's where that tension is. And so that's what we're going to talk through today. So I encourage you to join in on the discussion with us. So the first question is this. All right, we feel, we know what this feels like, but here's the first question. What is the biblical idea of fellowship? When we say fellowship, we have our cultural ideas. We have our traditional ideas of just because that's what we have always done. But what is the Bible? What's the understanding of fellowship? Is it, um, is it having a potluck? You know, is it in-person gatherings? What, what does it look like? And so we're going to look at God's Word. We're going to say, okay, this is what are the biblical ideas, and then what does it look like in this digital age that we find ourselves in? What are the challenges, and what are the opportunities? Our biblical understanding of fellowship comes from the Greek word simply koinonia, koinonia. And in classical Greek, if you were to uh, so the New Testament was written primarily in what's called Koine Greek, or the common Greek of the day. And in the classical Greek, which is a d- different dialect of Greek, it was, you know, the Homers and the Plato's and the Socrates, all those writings were in classical Greek. This referred to the close union and brotherly bond among human beings. And I'm going to say that again. Koinonia, or what we call fellowship, the biblical idea of fellowship. In classical Greek, the, the Greek culture saw it as this close union and brotherly bond among human beings. It originated from the idea of the gods and humans being linked and bonded together, and then culturally they, they portrayed it as this is a huge value that they had in Greek culture, that they would have this brotherly human connection with one another. This idea carried over into the New Testament, and so there was a strong usage 19 times throughout the New Testament. This idea of koinonia or fellowship or gathering or community was, was presented in the New Testament. It speaks primarily of the church being interested in one another and sharing with one another in the community of the faith. 
which is the church. I'll say that again. The New Testament idea speaks primarily of the church being interested in one another and sharing with one another in the community of faith. And so I'm sure that's what you sense. Like that is church. It's feeling a part of a family. It's feeling a part of that someone knows your name, that someone is concerned for you, that someone is praying for you. You know, those are the ideas of fellowship. You know, those ideas of of church gathering and community is 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 that idea of family, is the idea of brotherhood and sisterhood and family. Um, the, the scripture that we often refer to and, and that I like to see is a, actually a great picture of what fellowship looks like. Acts chapter 2, if you have your Bibles, Acts chapter 2, starting with verse 42, we'll also put it uh, on the, in the chat below. Acts 2, 42, verses uh, 42 through 47. Uh, they've devoted, I feel like I'm doing too much talking. Do you want to, one of you ladies want to read it? Jess, you want to read that? Yeah, I can read it. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread. There's a potluck supper for you. <laughs> and to yes. prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their houses and ate together uh, with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all of the people. And the Lord added to their numbers daily uh, those who were being saved. Man, that's a great picture, isn't it? So there's a lot of mention of food in there. I'll just I'll just put that side note in. So <laughs> it's biblical. <laughs> so that's a picture. I encourage you to read that over. Maybe use that as a scripture this week to just to meditate on. I'm going to read that passage this week and and just pray through that. But I want you before because this is the danger is you read that and you say, okay, that's exactly what it should look like. We should be in the houses. We should have bread. We should just do this. And I want you to, there's two distinctions you need to make. There's a, when you're reading scripture, especially narrative portions of scripture, when they're telling a story, there's times where it's a, there's a descriptive element to that scripture where it's describing something. Then there's a time where it's prescriptive, where it's describing, but also saying, this is how it should look for you. All right. My feeling is here's a blend of both. This is more of a descriptive picture of what the early church at this time looked like. It looked like, you know, because think about the context here. They are in the season of, these are Jewish men and women gathering, okay? But they're not allowed to gather in the temple anymore. They're not allowed to gather in the synagogue where they had gathered so what, they're forced out of that? So now they're forced into where we're going to gather. Well, we each live somewhere. We're going to gather in our homes. We're going to gather in the temple courts outside. And, and so they were forced to gather into these groups for fellowship, for unity, for um, uh, you know, all these other worship and prayer and evangelism. And we and, saw the and result. Food. And, and food <laughs> and eating. But if they had live stream and Zoom calls, that's right. They, they would be using. Maybe they did. Do they have <laughs> smartphones in the chat? Say, do they? Have, you think they had first century smartphones? Yeah. Probably not. But um, so this is kind of a descriptive picture of what the early church at this season, in this season, looked like. It wouldn't be that much longer when they would all have to adjust again because what happened? Persecution then swept up in Jerusalem, and then they were all scattered throughout. So. This is a picture of where it looked like then, but even this at this point, it would be scattered, and psh, the, the church would be scattered throughout the region, uh, throughout that region. So I think what you're saying, and I, and I think it's a really important point to understand, is that the body of Christ changes, um, and their method, the message never changes, but the method upon which we either gather or even how we speak God's word does change. I always think back to the analogy of like when you're raising kids, you can't parent a two-year-old the same way that you do a 14-year-old, even yes. though your 14-year-old might sometimes act like a two-year-old. <laughs> you still have to parent them differently because they're in different seasons of their life. Otherwise, it's ineffective. It's yeah. Ineffective. I mean, baby straight jackets work great for when they're infants, <laughs> but you have to get like adult straight jackets he for when they're teenagers. He does not mean baby straight jackets. <laughs> baby straight jackets are simply the swaddle blankets. The swaddle He me. calls but them the baby straight jackets. Anna anymore. No. That's right. <laughs> we try. Just we do kidding. try, Anna. <laughs> that's that but that's a great great distinction. Parenting kids and 
and teenagers, it looks differently. So here's a picture of fellowship of the church. We see this gathering. We see this unity. We see brotherly love. We see brothers and sisters gathering. We see the church multiplying people or reach. It's awesome. Um, we see the church showing and sharing. Here's a primary thing. They're showing and they're sharing the love of Jesus with one another. All right? You can do that in a variety of settings. In a var- what that looks like might look different now than it does, but we can still show and share the love of Jesus how, however that whether we're gathered together or we're, whether we're online or, you know, I think about, too, when I, when I read Scripture, I think about even churches. I know we live in a land where there's a lot of freedom where we can gather. We can pretty much do what we want and, you know, gather and worship, and, and it's not an issue but there's countries where churches can't do that. They can't just say, hey, we're going to all gather in a 200 people in a building, and we're going to worship Jesus, and, you know, they'll go to prison for 20 years if they do that. And so they have to go underground, and they have to be, uh, they have to be in homes, and they have to be secretive, and they have to be quiet. And there's, I mean, it looks different wherever, you at, wherever you're at. The church in America looks different than the church in Iran or the church in, church in Pakistan or the church in North Korea. You know, there's some pastors and Christians that will be in prison for, for 20 years, 10 years, and their idea of fellowship is going to look different. They're not going to have their brother and sister right next to them, all right? They're going to be in a prison cell for years, and, but they still feel connected to the body of Christ. They still feel that they have brothers and sisters praying for them and, and caring for them and looking after them. So, and it's been that way, like, throughout history. Like, yeah. Paul wrote some of the books of the Bibles, Bible in prison. So, yeah. And he didn't have technology like we do today, and neither do a lot of the churches in other countries. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think that's a really great point because and understanding that as as culture shifts, as as things kind of move on and um and we we can't you know there's been that term new normal um but instead of taking a look at a new normal uh, as to what what is god honoring what how are we gathering how are we doing things that honor god rather than thinking about well this is a new normal now you know could we could we really think of how fellowship could be in a different way that is god honoring and putting him first and foremost Good. The idea of fellowship inspired our leadership team. This is one of the things we prayed about and discussed. Okay, what does fellowship look like for our church? And it became a value of ours and even a dream of ours. And we presented it this way to our church. We say it this way. We dream of a church where we love one another and treat everyone like family. For us, that's what fellowship looks like here. It's, it's loving one another treating people like family. And so personally, I know we can do that in person, but we can also do that online. It looks different. It feels different, you know, but if we can adjust and say, you know what, I'm still showing love. I'm still feeling loved. I'm still expressing love and helping others. Just remind yourself, this is, you are sharing and showing fellowship, the fellowship of the believers and so now this moves us into the next question is, what does fellowship look like in a digital age? You know, we're hoping that this uh, digital season, you know, I'm going to say it's not going to end. I think digitally is a great tool. You know, I think digital will continue to go on in addition to in person. But uh, for now in the season where it's primarily digital, it's primarily only online, what does that look like? And so I think it's a great question to process because when we do get back into in-person, when we do continue to offer digital and streaming and online, we can still do both and see that there's an important part of fellowship in both of those arenas, whether you're in-person or whether you're digitally online, we can still have fellowship. And so first question, or the second question is, what does it look like in this digital age? And the first idea is, what are the challenges that we have found with fellowship online or fellowship in a digital season that we find ourselves in? I think one of the challenges is just wrapping our mind around that and just um, being intentional to remember that 
fellowship is going to look different now, and that's okay. Like what we've always done in the past isn't what we always have to do in the future. We have permission, especially in the season, to be creative and to allow God to give us ideas that are more effective, even more effective than what we've been doing in the past. I like that too, and and I think it does ch- pose a challenge not just for the church, um, for an individual person. Um, I know, being an extrovert by nature, this was a huge rock to my sis. Uh, like it was, a, it was like a rocking thing to me to not be able to come and and even whenever we do have the opportunity to meet again, um, face to face, it's going to be hard to be like. Uh, Oh, wait, I can't hug you now. The awkward <laughs> the, non uh, air, air uh, hugs. Uh, like, uh, uh, you used to know, like, the, uh, those types of things. And so, you know, I think that does provide a little bit of a challenge. And not that not every personality type is is challenged by this, but um, but I, it's one of those great things. Like, you know, that first week, I think I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to go bonkers. <laughs> like, legit bonkers. I'm going to go, like, I, I can't see my students I can't, like, go to church and see my community. I can't, you know, like, there's just a lot of things that I can't do. I can't even go to the grocery store and, like, you know, do certain, you know, the, there were just things that, like, I, I found I couldn't do. But with that challenge comes opportunities. And so I, I'm not, certainly not perfect in any way about this, but I remember that first week I was like, oh, my gosh, this is going to be bu- – I'm going to go crazy, like I said. But then the Lord just kind of knocked on, knocked on my heart, and he says, how could you turn this challenge into an opportunity to grow? And I think that's where we're at right now. Like, are we going to use these challenges as opportunities, or are we going to continue to see them as challenges because if we continue to see them as challenges and not recognize the opportunities then there's not going to be much growth that's going to take place yeah that's good I think too um talking about personality types I'm naturally more introverted and I think that there's challenges on that end too because as an introvert it's like okay this is awesome like there's less social interaction right but (laughs) then you can get stuck in, okay, I'm going to not do anything because this is, um, this is comfortable and I like this. So you can get stuck in that comfortable and not challenge yourself to reach out because it's easy to just stay at home and stay to yourself. Yeah. Uh, let's move into the area of opportunities. You know, I think we all sense that there has been challenges, but what are the opportunities, you know, that you've seen, um, I think for me, it's it's just neat hearing some of the stories where people are being the church, and because I think you know we got so used to gathering and relying on one or two people or a team to do things for us or to do ministry to us, and now we're seeing you know what what happens when those people aren't around or what happens if they're not right next to me and. I have to maybe take responsibility for my faith and I have to grow as a Christian or I have to, you know, I know I need love. I'm going to show love to others. And so you begin to see people reaching out to others. Hey, how can I help you? What do you need? And hearing about people going to get groceries for others and helping others. So, man, there's a huge opportunity there that, you know, so that's one of them. Anyone, anything else that you see? Opportunities. I mean, for for me, it was just an opportunity because of my personality type to get quiet. And, you know, I saw that as an opportunity for my spiritual growth and to get quiet before the Lord and just allow him to grow in me and grow in that passion once again. Um, Because sometimes we could get busy. And so so I think sometimes for people like me that like to be busy, that really enjoy that, that getting, you know, getting your hands dirty and doing work and such, it was a great opportunity for the Lord to really do some heart surgery kind of on me. And, and, um, and boy, oh boy, did he ever reignite my passion to once again reconnect with others and to once again shine the light of Jesus wherever we go. And, you know, I, I, will, I will stop by saying this because this, this gets me very excited. He just reminded me, like, through this time that the good news, the gospel, is truly good news. It is the thing that we should be sharing. Our heart, our exuberance, our enthusiasm for him just can never be hidden because of his 
good news, the gospel. Jesus died on the cross and wants us to have relationship with him and with others. And I think those are, oppor- those are huge opportunities, especially if you're like me, to get quiet in this next week or so and allow the Lord to renew and revive your passion for him and for other people. That's one of the great opportunities he has done in me. That's great. Yeah, I think just another opportunity that kind of goes along with that is as we practice reaching out to people in a different way, uh, other Christians in a different way, we can easily transfer that to the way that we're reaching out to unbelievers. I've heard of many stories of people who um, have been saved, who have watched church services, who would never even consider walking into a church door. And I think that's just a great opportunity that has come out of this, is that the uh, church presence is um, much broader now, and we have that opportunity to reach people. Uh, who wouldn't come to church? Absolutely. I think we're sensing, we knew there that we are already in a digital age before this, but now I, I feel as a church, we, we sense that the whole world is shifting digitally. So, you know, it's like, a, it's like this uh, highway system that has been going on, but we kind of dabbled in it here and there, but this is where the people are at. And so how can we, I see this as a huge opportunity how can we utilize digital technology, this digital superhighway, this this area where people already are? They're they're more comfortable to visit a church online, you know, than come in person. Eventually, we pray that that will come in person, but they're more interested in having a conversation about Jesus online than in person. They're more comfortable asking for prayer online than maybe in person. And so, man, here's a huge opportunity that. Everybody can do it. You don't have to just have a building. You don't have to just have a property. If you have a smartphone, you have an internet connection, you have a computer, you can begin to uh, share Jesus with others. You can begin to fellowship with other believers across the globe. You can begin to pray for others online. I mean, there's so many opportunities. You know, I've been thinking uh, there's just so uh, all these avenues, YouTube and TikTok and Snapchat. There's all kinds of, there's a million platforms out there. Uh, how can we utilize them for the gospel? How can we utilize them for Jesus? And there's things that haven't even been dreamt up yet that, that we can utilize these platforms, even, even new platforms as they open for the gospel and for reaching people and sharing the love and truth of Jesus with those around us. I see online technology is a huge opportunity. We've been doing Zoom calls every Wednesday night. You know, it's just been a great way to connect with people. Yes, it's, it's not the same as in person, but you know what? It's a little more um, consistent sometimes because why? Because it's a little more convenient. Sometimes Wednesday nights can be tricky with kids and school and uh, jobs and sports. And so a Zoom call, man, no matter where you're at, you could be in the car, you could be at home, you could be cooking dinner, you can click, I'm going to Zoom with them for 30 minutes and get to hear from my church and see them and pray for them and Boom, you didn't have to drive an hour. You didn't have to drive a half hour and spend three hours somewhere. So I see that as an opportunity, you know, uh, technology, utilizing technology for fellowship is a great opportunity. I think that's, like, also so important, though, because I was just thinking this week, we've had on youth group, we've had students join from other states, friends of students in the youth group they've invited that live in other states. Um, And I think that we're going to find that as a church as well. We're going to reach people um, beyond the scope of driving to church on a Sunday morning. So how do we connect with those people and disciple them? I think it's cool that like Zoom is an opportunity to be able to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. I, lo- I love the opportunity to, to connect and have relationships with people because sometimes we think we can't have a relationship um, with others and such. But I think it's really important to be able to use those words to connect and also connect that with a face. I think that's really important. Yep. I think for me as a pastor, Sunday mornings sometimes are tough to connect with everyone, and I feel that guilt. Like, I go home, I'm like, man, I didn't even get to say hi to so-and-so, or man, I just, I didn't even have a chance to, pr-. just because Sunday mornings can be really crazy. Everyone comes in usually around the same time, and then they leave at the same time, and you can't always connect with people. So now it's a little neat to utilize technology to 
you know, at least you can send them a text message, you can call them, you can do a Zoom call and email. I mean, there's just different ways you can connect with people. And uh, so it's, it's just an a opportunity that God's reminding us of, you know, fellowship is still here. You know, we can still show and share the love of Jesus with our brothers and sisters in Christ. We can do that in person, but we can also do that online and digitally. Yeah, if you have a way that you're connecting that's working really well, drop it in the comments. I know a lot of people from church have connected with me. I've connected with them through this time. So yeah. I know that some of you guys are doing a really good job, so let us know what you're doing. Awesome. Maybe we should start a church TikTok, huh? What's a challenge we're going to do? Like, <laughs> wee, wee, wee. <laughs> Everyone do the robot for Jesus, you right? <laughs> no? Okay. Yeah, drop it. Out. I like that question. <laughs> What are you doing? We need some better ideas, guys. Better Come better on. Ideas. Don't leave it to me. <laughs> Anyways, here's two, here's two applications for you to, to think about and pray about. Number one, how can I practice fellowship while in quarantine? I want you to take a moment. How can you practice fellowship while in quarantine? What does that look like? You know, maybe you're feeling disconnected. Well, how can you connect? How can you connect with other brothers and sisters in the Lord? Maybe you're on the stream, but maybe you haven't been doing Zoom and you feel disconnected. Well, maybe step one for you is I'm going to join our Wednesday night Zoom call, and I'm going to see other brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm going to talk to them. I'm going to pray with them. I'm going to feel encouraged. Maybe for you that's just the first step is, you know, I'm going to express fellowship with others. Or maybe for you also it's I'm going to call someone. I'm going to check in on someone. I'm going to text someone this week. You know, I've been wondering how so-and-so is doing. Well, don't just call a pastor and say, hey, how is so-and-so doing? <laughs> Pick up your phone and call so-and-so. <laughs> if you don't have their number, then you can call me, and I'd be glad to give you their number. But, they, you know, people want to hear not just from their pastor. They want to hear from you. They want to hear from their brothers and sisters in Christ, to know that you care about them, you've been thinking about them. So call someone this week, text someone this week. You know, maybe we have some uh, great people who write, do cards. Donna, and yes, she's amazing at writing cards. Marsha does cards. And uh, maybe for you, like, man, you enjoy writing cards and mailing cards. Well, if you need an address, ask me. and I'll, I'll give you an address. You can send a card in the mail. And uh, so those are, those are just ways that you can begin to practice fellowship. And maybe the Holy Spirit will drop another idea for you to f uh, practice fellowship in this quarantine. The second question is this. Because the quarantine isn't going to last forever, you need to begin to think about how can I practice fellowship when out of quarantine? How can I practice fellowship when I am allowed to be out of the house, when I'm allowed to? Maybe you're already out of the house and do it, I mean. But uh, when, when the culture and community is all out and we're back together, how can you practice fellowship? But don't just default back to what exactly. you've done in the past. Because it's easy to like, well, I'm just going to go to church on Sunday. And yes, that's a part of it, you know, come to church. But also when you're here, fellowship with others share with others you know don't just hide in the back and like hope someone says hi to you you know and you can still connect during the week yeah <laughs> there you go yeah. you know okay that's yeah, amazing can we can still. connect throughout the way it doesn't have to just be on sunday that's good yeah i think i think an, an important thing too and i like how we've been talking about how to practice fellowship while in quarantine while out of quarantine it might be really easy to stay where you are comfortable right now in quarantine because we talked before that it takes 21 days to build a habit. You have a habit right now of staying at home and possibly not fellowshipping. Don't stay there. Yeah. Stay, get out of that. And whenever you are able to be free, whenever you feel healthy enough to be free, be free. Be free to fellowship. Okay, now I am going to post below. Okay, are you ready for this? I'm ready. Have you ever seen those memes of what happens whenever people are allowed to go back to church again? Okay, those little like, and they go oh, like yeah. this. Ah, they do all these like crazy like, I'm so excited. I'm going to just hug everybody and just be super. Guys, we want that. We want you, well, we want that safely whenever <laughs> we come back. Okay, so uh, I'm sorry. This is the extrovert coming out of me. Um, but it comes to that point where we really do want to be the hands and feet of Jesus extended with fellowship, with the all the five functions of the church, but especially with fellowship. So then when we do come back, we could get all excited and go crazy, you know, whatever. So 
Anyways. I'm so excited. <laughs> doom, 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 and I just get high. Okay, doom, we're doom, all done. Doom, doom. <laughs> so those are the two questions that you can process. And uh, practicing fellowship in quarantine, practicing fellowship out of quarantine. And thanks so much for joining us today. And uh, we're going to wrap this thing up today and appreciate uh, our panel discussion. Uh, Pastor Jess and Krista, thank you so much for your input, your thoughts. If you have a topic, a question, put it in the chat, and we'll take a look at those, and we'll do this again next week, Lord willing, uh, unless Jesus comes. May I, I, may I, I believe, we're going to end this way, I believe that Jesus is coming soon. These are all just signs of the times. These aren't, these aren't like uh, surprises to Jesus. He's not like, wow. There's a pandemic. Man, wow, that's crazy. These are all part of these last days, these end times, where, where history is heading to a point. And the point is that Jesus is going to return. He's coming to return for you and for me, for his church. And uh, we need to be ready. If anything, this needs to be a wake-up call to humanity that you need to be ready for Jesus' soon return. That it's going to be soon. That Jesus will come back. He is coming back. That is a fact. That is a truth. You read the Bible throughout. Jesus is coming back. And we need to be ready. We need to be ready, church. We need to be ready, people out there. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, make it today. Don't wait. Don't say, well, maybe someday or maybe we're back in church or we're back gathered. Make it today. This is the day that you'll say, Jesus, I choose to follow you with all of my heart. Maybe the Holy Spirit's been drawing you this week. He's been He's been speaking to you and May it, things that you've just you're, you're not content you're not you're not settled where you're at you know that jesus has something he has a plan for your life and i'd say give your life give your heart to jesus today would you do that with me would you pray with me would you say jesus come and live in my heart my life today jesus i turn from my sins and i turn by faith to you jesus come Forgive me, transform me, and come, Holy Spirit, live inside of me all the days of my life. Help me to live for you. Help me to follow you, Jesus. And as your love transforms me, I will share and show your love with those around me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing. Praise you for what you're doing. I just, I, I want to close with this story. This was just so neat this week. And uh, I've been uh, going through my books, and uh, one of the goals I've always wanted to do is just kind of, I have, if, you, if you've never been in my home or our home, uh, we have books everywhere. We have bookcases and bookshelves, and, and I've always wanted to organize them because I have some sections organized, and some that just, you keep buying them and putting on different random shelves. So I've been doing an online catalog of all my books, and going through random shelves and boxes of books that I have and just kind of cataloging them. And the other day, I was going through one, and it had some Bibles and some old Bibles, and I was beginning to put them on my uh, uh, online database. And one Bible I opened up, in the open flap, there was this handwritten note, and it was 1982, and the date, the day that I was... Uh, catalog these books was May 14th. There was, I think, Thursday, I guess it was. And um, the note inside the Bible was May 14th, the same day, just almost 40 years prior, 1982. And it was a Bible that was given to my parents, and it was a time in their life where they were coming to faith in Jesus. And I read that note and just these these words of uh, presenting this Bible as God's word and his truth for them and what that could do in their hearts and lives and then fast forwarding almost 40 years later and thinking about my life and our kids and my brother and his kids and my sister and their kids and, and how that decision to follow Jesus changed the tra trajectory of our family's heritage and legacy 
And I encourage and challenge you. Maybe you pray that, prayed that prayer today. Maybe, you, maybe you're about to pray that prayer. Just think about what God could do today that could have a ripple effect for generations, 30, 40, 50 years down the road. You say, well, if it's just me praying a prayer. It's just me making a decision. But your decisions affect those around you. Amen. Your decisions affect, affect your spouse. And your deci de decisions affect your kids and your grandkids. Why? Because it affects your behavior. It affects how you live and how you love. And, I mean, I grew up in a home that it wasn't perfect, but I knew mom and dad loved Jesus and they loved us. And that changed my life. I, I, didn't, I didn't serve Jesus because mom and dad told me to serve Jesus, although they encouraged us in that. They took us to church whether we wanted to be in church or not. I, I challenge you, parents, don't give it a choice. Hey, kids, you want to go to church? You know, Say, kids, we're going to church. We're going we're gonna to be there. We're going to be involved. And I'm so grateful I had parents that said, you know, we're going to go to church. So they modeled what it was look like to love Jesus. They model what it looked like to love his church. And for me, man, it's the same thing. I want to do that for our kids. I, I want to love Jesus. We want to love the Lord. We want to love his church. We want to help our kids do the same. And so I encourage you, I challenge you, make this decision to follow Jesus and let it change yes. your family's yes. history in Jesus' name. God, I pray for each person watching. I pray that you would release, Jesus, the freedom, the liberty that comes in Jesus' name. I pray, though, that as people are making decisions today, that their family's trees will change in Jesus' name. The fa family yes. heritage and histories will change in Jesus' name. Curses will be broken in Jesus' name. Addictions will be broken in Jesus' name. Bondages will be broken in Jesus' name. Depression, demonic activity will be bound and broken in the name of Jesus. People today wrestling with things that they say, man, I, I'm bound in chains I, and I don't want to pass this on. Jesus, I thank you for the freedom in your name to break the chains. Yes, Lord, you, Lord, to cast out thank the adversary, to bring freedom to, to the captive today. In Jesus' name, we love you. We thank, thank you, you today. So in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks so much for joining us. God bless you, and we'll see you next week.